Hi there, this is John here from Outdoor Explore and in a couple of days I'll be heading to Nepal uh, for an expedition to climb Amada Blum Mountain um, and we thought that it would be useful if I went through all the gear that I'm taking so that um, other people who are doing Amada Blum can maybe watch this video and, and just get a head start on what gear to pack and everything uh, and hopefully when I get back I'll do another one of these so that we can go through the stuff that I did use and didn't use and what was useful and uh, what I would have benefited from if I'd have taken that as well. Um, so let's uh, jump into this. So we'll start first of all with the the bags and the gear that I'm taking. So this is the Black Diamond uh, Mission 50. So it's a 50 litre mountaineering bag. Uh, I've been using this in the mountains for um, in all, all through the winter I think the ski touring and climbing and everything and it's been brilliant um, it's more than big enough uh, and it's got the removable brain on there so I've taken that off so I can use it for my hold, uh, for my hand luggage on the plane and it makes it a bit smaller um, this little thing I just clip on because I don't like wearing a watch so I just clip that onto the strap on the, the uh, shoulder strap uh, I'm flying with China Southern I think so uh, they allow two 23 kilogram hold luggage bags, so I've got two big duffel bags there to, to fit all my gear in. Uh, so this will be my hand luggage and also my day bag while I'm there and my climbing pack while we're on the mountain. Uh, this will be for all my, all my gear. So one of these duffels will um, have all of my gear in that the porters will carry. Uh, so clothing and, and everything that's not in my day pack. Uh, and the other one will be all my climbing gear that will go straight to Amadablan base camp uh, a few days ahead of us. Um, so that's what everything's going in. Uh, then feet. So the standard stuff, flip flops, uh, my uh, Scarpa, just trail shoes, uh, a pair of Solomon Quest hiking boots. I've been using those for about a year now, they're extremely comfy. I can't recommend them enough, they're really good. Um, so I'll be wearing those for all the all the trekking, acclimatizing, we're going up to Everest Base Camp and up to Gokyo Lakes. Um, so we're we'll doing spending at least a few weeks trekking in those. Uh, and then the mountaineering boots. So these are the Las Sportiva Olympus Mons boots. They're probably a bit overkill for Amada Blum. People wear these on like Everest and uh, Mount Vincent in Antarctica and you know all the all the big the crazy cold stuff um, so they're a bit overkill but I've used them uh, to climb Mount Baker in Washington and on a bit of rock climbing and they're like they're insanely grippy I couldn't believe how good they were for rock climbing so um, yeah hopefully they're gonna be alright uh, I've heard other people using Las Plativa Spantix I think they're probably a bit a bit more ideal for Amada Blum um, but We'll see. Uh, sticking with feet then, now I've got a ton of socks. Uh, thick socks for the um, Olympus Mons, uh, just to keep the feet warm. Thin hiking socks for just the trails and then like a, a bunch, I think I've got like eight pairs of standard socks. Um, so, uh, just cause like you would get sweaty and everything and then you can only wash, it would take them to dry, It'd take a little while for them to dry so, uh, I probably packed a bit more than I need there, but they're pretty small anyway. Uh, a pair of gaiters, two pairs of shorts, just for hiking around. Um, boxes. I got some fleece pants at the back there, so that will be for just for like hanging around a base camp. Uh, probably won't end up climbing in those because if you're climbing in fleece and you sweat, it tends to stick to your knees and you can't get your knees up, so that'd actually be a bit too restricting, I think, to climb in. Um, and three pairs of hiking trousers, one with like the zip off so you can turn them into shorts and the belt, um, a few hankies, everyone thinks I'm really old school for carrying hankies but they double up as a bandage and uh, yeah I find them really useful. Uh, then I think I've got four uh, wicking t-shirts, uh, a set of base layers so um, the top and the long johns underneath as well. Uh, so I'll be wearing those probably the higher camps to sleep in um, and probably also to climb in. 
on the summit day or maybe the the day before as well so uh, I've already tested those out in the in the winter here in in Canada and they're they're pretty good uh, then another base layer at the back there um, a fleece this one um, just just taking the one fleece I, I wear it all the time and it's, it's absolutely brilliant it's not out uh, fleece then a couple of kind of wicking long sleeve tops as well uh, just in case it gets cold and sleeveless top just so I can keep cool uh, so this is all the all the clothing it seems like a lot there um, I might take a couple of bits out but I think because we're trekking we're, we're on the move for almost a month so that's a lot of sweat so I wanted to take a bit extra so that I don't have to like wash stuff every day and have tons of stuff drying on my backpack as we're walking so um, yeah hopefully I won't be going too much over the weight restrictions there uh, then <clears throat> so keeping warm then we've got just a Mammut, uh, I think it's Polar Tech jacket, so it's just an insulated jacket, it's not down, um, but I, I've used that multiple times in multiple winters anyway, and it's been incredible, it's extremely warm once you're moving and climbing in it. Then a down jacket I wear at base camp and at the higher camps, um, it's probably, I might wear it on like the summit day, if it's cold enough. Then like Rochelle, so Arcteryx, I think it's a Beta SL jacket I think. And a pair of Montane um, event waterproof bottoms. Um, There's a really good combo. They're really like, both are really waterproof, um, but also really breathable. Then we've got a couple of buffs over here. Um, a couple of hats. So one of them is just for hanging around base camp and everything, just keep like extremely warm. But I wouldn't want to climb in it. It's too far too hot. So I've got another one, um, just to, yeah, and then <clears throat> gloves. So I've been up to six and a half thousand meters before I did Mira um, in Nepal, and I really struggle with my gloves. I used these ones, and they were the warmest ones that I had last time, and my hands went were far too cold. So I've stepped it up a bit this time. Um, I ended up buying these things. Uh, not used them yet, but they're extremely thick down gloves wouldn't be able to climb in them they're far too uh, thick to climb in but hopefully at the higher camps uh, if we, when we wake up and it's insanely cold I can put those on just to get my hands going and get, um, get them warmed up and then I can switch over to these things so these are the black diamond soloist and it's the like the lobster style mitt with the one finger so you can uh, still use your gear you can still get the like carabiners and drawers off your off your harness and stuff like that without being too restricted uh, and they're fleece lined with a, a waterproof I think it's Pertex shell over the top uh, again I've used those through the winter here in Canada and they've been brilliant uh, these are just black diamond um, belay, uh, belay gloves I think uh, we're not going to be like doing any of that kind of thing but um, I find them really good for scrambling on rock just kind of keeps your hands a little bit warmer but they're they're quite grippy and um, yeah and then these just a kind of thin layer I can put inside another pair of gloves if I need to I'm taking these as well um, just in case uh, these gloves get too wet or or I wear these lower down on the mountain um, and then I don't have to worry if they get wet because I've still got these for the, the real climbing to fall back on um, like I say, I, last time I, I, my hands got too cold, so I'm kind of going a bit overboard with gloves this time, but um, I'd rather it be that way than uh, get frostbite or something. So, the standard stuff for like sun protection, the, the hat, uh, a pair of sunglasses, a pair of glacier um, style glasses, and um, the ski goggles. Now, I think these are actually kids ski goggles they're really small but I find them good for mountaineering because they fit underneath my helmet quite well um, they're, my standard ski goggles would be too big then sun cream and the uh, sun protection for the lips here so uh, one of these will go with me while we're hiking the other one will go to base camp yeah, so if I end up using far too much while we're hiking I've still got a, a backup for when we get to base camp for the actual climb and all that kind of thing 
Uh, first aid, so this green one at the top here is uh, bandages and band-aids and, and um, all that kind of standard stuff. The red one is pills, so um, ibuprofen, paracetamol, um, flu tablets and all that kind of stuff. Then the two pots there, one is Dymox. So I've got enough pills, I think, to get from Luckler, from the point where we land in Luckler to um, the to the summit, and then after, two days after. So the, pretty much the point where we're starting to head back down again from base camp. Uh, and then they they advise that you shouldn't. Once you're heading down, you should stop taking them. The other one is like a, a powerful antibiotic. Um, they said before I should go with ciprofloxacin, but um, when I went to the doctor, they advised that actually there's a, an immunity in Nepal now to ciprofloxacin. So oh, that's the Dymox. They've given me azithromycin, which apparently is the one to use now. Uh, so, sleeping stuff. Not actually taking the sleeping bag, this is just to show, it, um, but I'm renting a minus 15 sleeping bag in Nepal, in Kathmandu when we get there. Uh, but I've got the Thermarest, uh, just got this, it's the Neo Air X Therm. That, something like that. Um, it's really light and really warm. I've, I've tried it out a couple of times and you can just feel the heat coming off the off of it so um, uh, much better than carrying like a, a a foam mat and a thermarest as well. Just I just went with that. It's quite expensive but it's it's so light and really really warm. Uh, sleeping bag liner um, and then travel pillow just with an extra pillow and then the, the um, earbuds. So, toiletries, uh, shit tickets, you need them. Um, the, I got some soap here, uh, just didn't want to take shampoo because it's like, it's not, uh, didn't want it to kind of explode everywhere in the bag and um, get all messy, so just going to take a bar of soap. Uh, hand sanitizer, some cotton buds, some toothpaste and toothbrush. Um, my this is my pack towel packs down really small dries really fast so um, yeah that's good and then nail clippers just in case my nails get too long I, I hate having that uh, water bottles then we've got the standard like the plastic one liter and a metal one liter so the metal's good just in case everything freezes you can just put it on the on the burner and and melt the water inside it you can't do that with the plastic one so it's useful to have a metal one. And then this one I can use to drink out of while we're on the trek, but then once we get to the higher camps and we don't want to be getting out the tent to pee, uh, this will become my pee bottle. So that's why it's green, so I know not to drink out of it. And also I added this little thing to it, so if it's dark and I can't see the colour of it, I can tell because it's like, it makes a noise and it's got this on it. So I'm not going to run the risk of accidentally drinking out of this one. That's the point of that. Um, then just a mug, some spoons, um, food. So all the food that we're taking, all the food that we'll be eating on the trek is like is supplied while we're out there. But we need some food packs for the higher camps. So we've got four food packs there. They're just the standard kind of add water, add boiling water to it. Um, banana chips because I like them. Um, and then Cliff, Cliff Bar. We're uh, Nice enough to donate a bunch of stuff for this expedition, so uh, this is just a bunch of cliff stuff that, that we've given us. So we've got like the the standard cliff bars, the uh, the trail mix ones, the builder bars, and the blocks. So these the blocks and the gels are really good because they don't freeze as much. If you've ever tried to eat a frozen cliff bar, it's pretty much impossible. You've got to keep it in your jacket for a few hours to defrost it. So that's why these blocks and gels are really good. They're like quick release energy, and they either don't freeze or they don't defrost really quickly. Like I've never had an issue with those in the mountains um, in comparison to, the, to cliff bars anyway. So these are the ones to eat when you're higher up. You don't have to worry so much about them. Um, then a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. So oh, where do we start? I got uh, two uh, head torches here. So this one is actually rechargeable, or it's like a hybrid, so it takes standard AAA batteries, but it's also rechargeable as well. It's the Black Diamond Revolt. Uh, it's really good. It lasts about 24 hours full power on the rechargeable batteries. 
um, which is a lot longer than they say on the packet. I think they say like 12 hours, but it's it's much better than that. So I'm hoping this will be my main one, but then if the batteries run out while we're high up, I don't want to be faffing around trying to put new AAA batteries in it. So I've got a backup here that I can just pull out my bag and switch over to that one if necessary. Uh, this is the recharging cable for this. A uh, couple of knives, um, spare Ziploc just because they're really useful. Uh, uh, adapters for my electronics, um, spare batteries, the foil blanket, probably have never ever used them but I always carry them anyway just in case. Uh, Tupperware, just they're often really useful just for uh, small like, crushable things, keeping them safe and the um, electrical tape, really useful for just strapping stuff up. Um, Spare shoelaces, just in case one of your shoelace snaps, or also doubles up as a washing line. Um, GoPro and GoPro cable. Uh, this is actually the original, I think, the original GoPro Hero, so quite out of date, but uh, it was given to me by one of the other guys on the trek, so we'll be using that. Uh, then headphones for listening to music on the plane and stuff, pack of cards, some... Uh, Rechargers and stuff like that, and then I'm taking like my really small laptop. Uh, we might, well, we should have 3G at base camp, so I'm hoping I can connect and just kind of update family and friends and stuff and let, let them know where we are. If not, it's it's really lightweight, so um, it's not going to take up much space. Then camera stuff and the recharger, um, a bunch of books, so notepads, a couple of books to read while we're there. I think I've got. Let My People Go Surfing, and I Get Dreams, and the ne Nepalese uh, phrase book, always useful. Some promotional material for Outdoor Explore. So we've got some t-shirts made that say about the expedition, um, passport, money, locks for the uh, duffel bags, and then all the notes and everything, uh, itinerary and all of that. So one thing to remember about the money is you can't get Nepalese rupees outside of Nepal. So uh, you've got to take all the money in and then exchange it while you're there. So I think I've I think I'm taking 1,500 US dollars, which sounds like a lot, but when you include tips and summit bonus for the climbing guides, uh, food when you're in Nepal, showers, a lot of places charge for solar showers while you're out trekking and stuff like that. It's like that 1,500 dollars doesn't go very far. Um, so a couple of um, whatever they're called, uh, the compression sacks, just always useful for clothes and stuff like that, also keeps them a bit dry, I think they're waterproof ones. Uh, whiskey, so our head guide likes a bit of whiskey, so uh, Namgi Sherpa is his name, so I've got that just to kind of say thank you to him. Um, then the climbing gear, this is the good stuff, so the helmet, um, Gravel G12, crampons, uh, the, uh, the kind with the, uh, just the, the standard, standard loop kind of thing at the front, not with the toe bail, um, because my standard mountaineering boots that I use don't have that, but these La Sportiva Evos, uh, sorry, La Sportiva, uh, Olympus Mons, um, they, 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 these fit anyway, I've tried them out already, you've got to extend them to the, the maximum length, but they do fit and they do work and they're, they're pretty, snug on there so I didn't have to get new crampons for this trip. Uh, harness, it's the kind with the uh, plastic buckles on the legs so you can unclip your legs, uh, your leg buckles fairly easily and like move around comfortably. Um, what else? This is a uh, Petzl Sumtech ice axe. I like this one because the um, the handguard slides up and down the, the, the axe so you can adjust where you want it, um, just makes it a bit nicer. Then the sender, or um, what else have we got? Yeah, so just a couple of prostate loops, a tib lock as well. Uh, a lot of the ropes that they use um, are actually probably too small for that, but uh, it's useful to have anyway just in case. Um, some screw gates and some snap gates and a bunch of slings. Uh, figure eight and a belay device so it's probably a little bit more than I actually need while I'm on the mountain but 
Um, it's always useful to have just a, I always like to have a couple of extra snap gates or, or screw gates anyway, just in case you have to create an anchor or something like that. Um, and then some clothes for Kathmandu. So this will just stay in Kathmandu at the hotel while we're away. And then when I get back, I've got something clean to change into and fly home and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything. So as you can see, it's a lot of stuff. Feels like almost too much stuff, but we are away for five weeks overall. So, so I leave on Tuesday the 4th of October. I get back on the 6th of November. So pretty much five weeks. So lots of stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's all necessary. But I'll, like I said, I'll do one of these when I get back and I can say what I did and what I didn't use and what I wish I had taken with me. Um, and yeah, put up a bunch of pictures and videos of the trip as well. So I guess I'll see you all in about a month. Bye.